It seems like we have an answer to why all those RX 6000 series GPUs were dying. Intel decides to can some overclocking that makes me really sad and guess what the most popular GPU is right now? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just want to remind you that we are currently celebrating our 500,000 subscriber milestone here on UFD Tech, and we're giving away a system with an i5 13600K, an RTX 4080, and it's all being sponsored by NZXT. It's in their H5 Flow case with their T120 cooler. We've got the C750 watt power supply, the N5Z690, and then the 1080p 240Hz Canvas 27F monitor. All of this is huge, it's massive, it's a big giveaway, we really appreciate it. We're gonna be drawing the winner for this on Friday, and the only way to participate is by coming to watch over on our Twitch channel, which I read the comments of people being like, you're celebrating 500,000 subscribers on Twitch, to which I have to say, yes, yes I am. Thank you for joining. It's a free system, enjoy it. And free information is what I'm gonna give you about the RX 6000 series GPUs that we talked about I believe it was last week for hot news. You can see this is the original video that came out of Chris Fix Germany, who had several dozen GPUs that were failing for no good reason that they could see with regards to the RX 6000. So it was the 6800 XT and up the high end GPUs. And the only thing at the time that Chris Fix could diagnose was the actual similarity between all of the graphics cards was that they were running the same driver revision, which then led to a lot of news outlets picking up this video and then talking about how the drivers were killing the GPUs. But specifically in his video, he said he wasn't sure and he just wanted more information if you had seen more GPUs die like this. That's the only thing that was actually the same. And so it stood to reason that that could potentially be an explanation. But now we know it is not officially, according to Chris Fix, who has released an additional video kind of updating exactly what's going on with the situation. And it turns out that you can blame not AMD with their drivers, okay? Their drivers aren't that bad that they're blowing up their GPUs, but you can blame miners because everything that goes wrong with GPUs is to blame on miners. So it turns out upon more investigation and Chris Fix actually getting this video out there to people who were part of this problem, they found out that the GPUs were actually being sold by the same retailer. It turns out that all of the graphics cards had been used in mining, which would actually still be really alarming because GPUs don't crack like this just because they've been mined on. You see things like fans burn out, you might see like VRMs pop. It's not necessarily the GPU Die that crack, so it would stand to reason that this is still a major concern, even if the GPUs were used for mining. But it turns out, as long as you get all of the information, that the GPUs were actually being used to mine in a high humidity environment. They were being stored in a warehouse that had no proper way of dealing with humidity, which led to some issues actually happening on the GPU die. And that's exactly what at least the current prevailing theory is regarding all of this. All of the dozens of GPUs came from the same seller, which came from the same GPU mining warehouse. It was multi layers deep, so it wasn't obvious at the time that Chris Fix made their video. To, to Chris Fix's credit, like the entire time, if you go watch the original video, this wasn't sensational by them in the slightest. This was them just being like, listen, I don't know what's going on. I've got dozens of GPUs that are dead. They're all like, I can't figure this out. None of it makes any sense. And as long as you distrust miners, well now, there you go. You got you got some confirmation bias to hit that hard. A lot of people initially when this discussion came up surrounding it were like, how would the driver even do that potentially? And then like the base level speculation was like it could be sending like accidentally way too much voltage and like blowing up the GPU die, which would be like a scary problem, like a, you know, house burning down problem if the GPU is doing that, which like it it didn't make any real sense. It was just that there was no good explanation at the time besides that. And now we have it, there you go. And I'm not gonna explain myself to you because Reese is gonna explain to you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's a new week, we've got some new deals to hopefully get you started out on the right foot. Starting with these Jabra Elite 85T True Wireless Earbuds. These feature their advanced active noise canceling with 5.5 hours of battery life with the noise canceling on and an extra 25 in the charge charging case. And don't worry, they're also sweat and water resistant so you can use them while working out flawlessly. You can pick these up for only $139.99 which is $90 off. And a 
another workout workhorse for your PC that is, is this AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. With 8 cores and 16 threads running at 4.7 GHz, this AM4 socket CPU is going for only $236, which is 47% off and honestly a great pickup if you're not always chasing the new new. And with that, the deals are done. You know you can find the links to them and more down in the video description down below. And with that, I'm going to hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. You know what else is a good deal? Or at least NVIDIA wants you to think it is GeForce Now, okay? They're trying to convince you that you don't need to buy graphics cards. Why do you think they're charging so much? Because it's way cheaper for you to go on to GeForce Now and get a GeForce Ultimate subscription for 20 bucks a month. They get your recurring revenue. It's not too hard on your pocket initially. And then they have forever business where they can sell the high-end GPUs to the people who can afford it. But everybody else, you you want a you wanna GTX 16 series replacement? <laughs> It's, it's, it's GeForce Now, that's what it is, okay? That's that's me being very pessimistic and probably a little unfair, but this is the reason I'm bringing this up is because people actually tested the brand new GeForce Now Ultimate plan that NVIDIA rolled out last week that promises you RTX 4080 gameplay with massive air quotes, because it turns out that uh, if you uh, wanted to severely downclock your RTX 4080, say that it's not actually a 4080 and it's even kind of maybe worse than a 4070 Ti, that's what you're looking at for performance with regards to these GPUs. So they're finding that in games like Cyberpunk, a desktop 4080 is 53% faster than GeForce Now at 1080p, 37% faster at 1440p, and 38% faster at 4K. Whereas in Guardians of the Galaxy, a desktop GPU is 46% faster at 1080p, and at 1440p, it's 80% faster. And they tested several different games Hardware Lux did, finding out that, yeah, this graphics card is not putting up the numbers that come close to competing with a RTX 4080, but probably still is the fastest cloud stream streaming platform that you could probably use. And part of this is because NVIDIA is not actually using RTX 4080s, they're using data center stuff. So the CPU that you're getting is a 16 core Ryzen CPU with 28 gigabytes of RAM, which is a weird combination. We don't know the IPC of that Ryzen, so that could potentially account for some of those GPU numbers not being as high as they could be because the CPU might be a bottleneck here. But then on top of that, the RTX 4080 isn't a 4080, it's an L40, which is the name of the GPU that they use, but you get 24 gigabytes of VRAM per card, so more than a 4080 gives you, but you get fewer shader multiprocessors coming in at 70 or 72 versus the 76 on the 4080. So the GeForce Now Ultimate is still gonna be the fastest thing that you could possibly do if you wanted to do some cloud gaming, but it's not actually gonna be equivalent to an RTX 4080, but it's gonna be an upgrade from your GTX 1650. Stop wanting lower end cards. Give Nvidia money every month forever. That's what they want. And you're not gonna be able to play Marvel's Avengers on GeForce Now any longer. I don't know if you could at all. I just, I need, a, it's a video game segue. That's what I'm going with right now uh, because, okay, moving on into the story. Square Enix is, is getting rid of it. It's September 30th is the last day that they're gonna provide official support. You can still play the game afterwards, but they're like, hey, if anything breaks, screw you guys. Uh, and the last final balance patch is gonna come out on March 31st. They're gonna be making it so that you can transition some of your in-game resources to different things. This chart means nothing to me personally, but if you play the game, hopefully it means something to you. Hopefully they're not leaving you out in the lurch where it's a terrible transition and they're giving you plenty of notice. You've got you've got over eight months to get this all figured out in case you wanna do that. And Intel has figured out that, hey, why give people free performance if we can charge them for it? And that's what's exactly happening because it's being found out that the 13th gen Raptor Lake chips, the non-K series, so the ones that aren't supposed to be overclocked, actually can't be overclocked, which I know I hear you saying, Brett, isn't that how it is? Like you're not supposed to overclock them? Well, it wasn't with the 12th gen because there was a micro code update that made it so that you could do no what is BCLK overclocking, which allows you to adjust the base clock and thereby you could get the chips to be faster. But it's being found out that while certain motherboards allow you to do this with something like an i7-12700, the i7-13700 has it completely disabled. So Intel is taking away a feature set that was available on the 12th gen, but was 
only there by accident in the first place. So it's not all motherboards that can support this. They need to have a BCLK generator in order to make that happen. But it's a bit of a bummer for Intel to take this away. I understand why they do it. Number one, they say it voids your warranty, but also it does on the K-series CPUs, by the way. Like if you read the official terms, you're not legally allowed to overclock your overclockable chips. Number two, it just like, it gets rid of product segmentation. If I can get an i5-13500 for $250 and I can overclock it with BCLK and get it to match a 13600K, well then why do I need to buy the 13600K at much more pricey point? You don't. And so it makes sense for Intel as a company to remove it. It just removes good fun options for enthusiast customers and I'm a negatively saddened by that. There's positive sadness, by the way, just in case you wanted to know. I wish Intel would leave this enabled, but not today, my friends. The vast majority of people who are gonna buy these chips would never even use it. It's just fun for enthusiasts to make it happen, okay? I just want it there. And you know what, people? apparently want the most popular GPU, at least according to one retailer, is uh, it's the RTX 4070 Ti, the one that got probably the most lambasted in recent reviews. The 4090 people were like, it's the fastest. What are you going to do? The 4080 was like, it's faster than whatever else is out there. It's still ridiculously priced, but you can't do it. Whereas the 4070 Ti people were like, what the hell is NVIDIA doing? Like they're just charging us for nonsense. This is a 60 Ti class card based on the memory profile that it has. What is, what is all of this? This is bad. Anyways, uh, it turns out that Mine Factory sold 545 models of the RTX 4070 Ti, which beat out the RTX 3060, as well as the 6700 XT, 3060 Ti, and 7900 XTX, which round out the top five GPUs. You can see that the RTX 4090 is there, as well as the RTX 4080. So this is just a snapshot of when GPUs are being purchased, but I can confidently say, and I know that this is purely anecdotal, which every personal story would be purely anecdotal. Brett, good job with all of these conversations you're having with people. I personally have purchased three RTX 4070 Ti's within the last two weeks for very specific reasons. I had to upgrade a lot of the GPUs that were going on. Catlin got a PC upgrade. Kyler got a PC upgrade for his personal system, and then he also got a work upgrade. And really what it came down to is we need CUDA acceleration for a lot of the work that we're doing, as well as ray tracing is something that they actually enjoy in their video games. So that means that AMD is kind of not in the conversation for that. But then when you look at the market that's actually out there, the 4070 Ti beats the RTX 3090, kind of goes toe to toe, if not beats out the 3090 Ti in a lot of different games and comes in at a price point that's lesser than both of those GPUs, which are no longer being sold. Actually, I probably would have gone with a 30 series GPU if the 4070 Ti wasn't so much better than the highest end 30 series. And so it just created this situation where if I want a powerful GPU right now, as we're actually trying to build out a few things, I mean, it's been nearly three years since I got Catlin an upgrade, it made sense for me to buy the fastest, least expensive NVIDIA graphics card that I possibly could in the 4070 Ti right now hits that. And there's no way of me knowing when they're gonna launch a 4070 or 4060 Ti. And I had to pull the trigger on a few things right now, but it, like for me, this makes sense. It's just, it's stupid expensive. It shouldn't be this way. I wish it was cheaper, but this is exactly why Nvidia gets away with it because people like me who need it for business use cases end up buying them anyways. I cannot get something else. They deprecated the other options. I cannot buy a 3090 Ti and getting used just doesn't make as much sense, especially in a situation with where it's like Catlin's work PC. She's all the way across the world. I can't actually build this for her. I can't buy a used GPU and make sure that everything gets assembled properly. So it creates this creates this weird situation. It's a it's a problem. I'm enabling Nvidia's bad behavior. Everybody blame me down below in the comments. And while I go think about what I've done, I'll wait for you to be here tomorrow for more hot news.